Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 might be the worst Call of Duty of all time. Whether it's the incoherent and embarrassingly short campaign. My speech was actually longer than this year's Call of Duty campaign. Recycled multiplayer content that Activision still managed to screw up. We are there! What the fuck? <laughs> what? I spawned in and got killed by a parked SUV! Get two kills with Semtex. Complete three daily challenges to unlock Semtex. I have to use the Semtex to unlock the Semtex. Thanks, COD. Or the fact that it's a glorified DLC selling for the full price of $70. The game is an embarrassment and a slap in the face of the player base. I'm done with Modern Warfare 3 multiplayer. The game is so shit! How do I play this game? I actually have like... Whoa! Whoa! Oh, they got How does he know? What the fuck? Modern Warfare 3 this year is the complete package. What's going on guys? It's your boy Drinker here and I'm coming back at you with another video. Like I described in my last video, this is my review of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2. If you do enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe, turn on post notifications, and comment down below telling me what else you want to see from me in the future. All of that really, I mean, it helps the channel grow a ton, so please go ahead and do that if you do enjoy the video. I'm going to break the game down piece by piece and describe why I hold so much disdain for this game now before we jump into this I want to say if you're having fun and enjoying the game you know don't let me rain on your parade this game is still a Call of Duty game at its core and still has some things going for it at least and I'll describe those later on in the video let's start by talking about the campaign Oh boy, where do we begin? You know, a campaign is terrible when IGN gives it a 4 out of 10. IGN are the people who consider a 7 out of 10 standard and average for a game. And this game's campaign got a 4. IGN is one of the most bought and paid for reviewer companies out there. A game generally has to be just terrible for them to give it any sort of negative press at all. This campaign, it's laughably short, clocking in at about 4 four hours to beat. The pre-rendered cinematics, they do look fantastic, but as soon as you hop in to play the game, the quality is degraded severely. It's not unacceptable, but it feels like every Call of Duty since Modern Warfare 2019 has sort of progressively looked worse and worse. It's even more apparent when you realize that the set pieces are reused. Sure, it's cool to see Verdansk and the stadium again, but not when their sole purpose for inclusion is so the devs can lazily cut corners. They literally serve no other purpose but but so the devs don't have to design new or interesting set pieces. Much of the buildings are Warzone assets, and it feels more like DMZ because of the bots and the gathering the loot, the new open combat missions they call them. You get to play them in the way that you want to play them. No, you're padding out the game because you don't have any content. They drop one sexy looking cutscene that's supposed to feel dramatic and tense and then just throw you in a recycled Warzone map with bots new open combat missions. Do I even need to mention that the AI seems to have more chromosomes than the Special Olympics, or would that be in poor taste? Graves returns after he died in the last game, and their explanation for him being alive is just, hmm, wasn't there. How lazy can you be as a writer? Shepard gathering all seven Dragon Balls in order to resurrect Graves would be more coherent storytelling. This also happens with Alex, another character who should be dead, and the only explanation for him being alive is just, uh, yeah, I'm alive. How the blood-soaked Protestant hell did you do that? Fuck you, that's how. Price gets gassed, and it literally adds nothing to the story. Come. Stay with us, sir! <laughs> He's perfectly fine, and it doesn't change a thing with the story. It serves no point. It seems like maybe they wanted to add another mission there, but then scrapped it probably due to time. But of course, they left Price getting gas in the game because they needed that extra five minutes to pad out the campaign. Also, Farah's working with Shadow Company. We sent you the missile. Shadow, Shadow Company. Company. Despite the fact that Shadow Company literally tried to kill all of her friends. Shadow Company don't have that kind of firepower. They're Aaron boys with attack vests. They're allies. They're allies. Huh? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait. Hey, 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 hey. And she never mentions that Graves is alive. They carried out a hit on my men. Commander Graves did this. Yeah, well, he had his orders, yeah. From home? General Shepard. Did Shepard send you those missiles? 
My weapons out of my business. Hey! Hey! He's a very dangerous man, Farah. We are all dangerous, Captain. She couldn't care less that she's working with the people that try to murder her friends. I mean, thanks, Farah. You're a real homie. Last Will's walking simulator mission is also stupid. The AI shoot at you for no reason, probably just because you're a woman, based. Laswell risks her life to get intel that we don't even use. Again, it serves no purpose whatsoever. The objective of the mission has zero outcome on the story. It's entirely filler and can be removed from the game without changing the outcome at all. The updated for modern audiences no Russian mission is laughable as well, instead of making you the terrorist taking pleasure from ending the lives of civilians, you're a woman who gets a bomb forcibly strapped to your chest before the game cuts to a white screen. You can't even start capping civilians to roleplay as a bad person. You don't even have to play the mission. Setting the controller down has the same outcome. The mission just plays out the exact same way. The only part of the mission that's actually entertaining is when they say that the Middle Eastern woman looks like a terrorist. Are you a terrorist? No! A little bit of casual racism is always fun, but this wouldn't even be racist enough for it to be in one of my Twitter posts. Follow me, by the way. Soap's death is also retarded. Makarov sprints up, shoots him in the head, shoots Price, and then scurries away like Skeletor, all while the rest of the crew watches it happen. With friends like this, who needs enemies? What, did they stop to tie their shoe in the middle of the firefight and then look up and Soap was dead? The game is completely incoherent and the plot is filled with more holes than your average brothel. Now, I could get into further detail, but I don't want to because it would take way too long and we've all suffered enough. But if you're interested in delving deeper, Bricky did a great job breaking down the campaign and i highly suggest that you watch this video also where the fuck is the music during all of this wouldn't do you any good It's basically non-existent, and when you do notice it, it's the most bland and generic music ever. You immediately forget any part of it that you hear. Multiplayer is just recycled maps from the OG Modern Warfare 2 that the devs still manage to fuck up. How do you take maps that have been around for years and still manage to fuck up the spawns? It's honestly beyond me. Control C, Control V, and you're done. Seriously, the spawns are fucking horrendous. If you kill someone, your best bet is to turn around because they'll probably spawn about 10 feet behind you. I think it's the same spawn system as in Vanguard, but it was dog shit in Vanguard too. My theory with the spawns is that they do this so the shitters can get free kills because they spawn directly behind someone. The skill-based matchmaking in this game is actually wild. If you go on a win streak and have a few games in a row that are good, it'll actually take forever to find a match, and when you do, you have like 150 ping. Now, to give some credit to Sledgehammer, they are extremely faithful map remakes. I mean, the details in them are basically perfect. However, with the movement changes that are in this game, of course, the maps play completely different than they did back in the day. I see a lot of children and wondering why us in the retirement community hold some nostalgia for these maps and they're calling these maps mid but they don't realize that they play completely differently from back in the day. A lot of the best maps from the OG Modern Warfare 2 still play great but a lot of them do actually play worse than before. Favela is a good example of this. It played very well in the OG Modern Warfare 2 but it's kind of mediocre in this game. Skid Row, on the other hand, was kind of mediocre back in the OG Modern Warfare 2. Not terrible, but it actually plays very well in this game. I'm so glad that they got rid of weapon tuning in this game as well. It was an interesting idea, but it was just far too complex and convoluted. For some reason, though, they decided to go ahead and replace it with a retarded armory system that makes you have to complete specific daily challenges in order to unlock things instead of just traditionally leveling up. They've tweaked it some since the game's launch, but it's overall just a stupid idea. If I'm max level, I should have everything unlocked. I shouldn't have to fart while 360 spraying with an LMG nine times in order to unlock an optic that I want. Speaking of the optics, why are there 80 of them? There's only like six good ones in the game. Why do we need so many damn optics? It's so obnoxious trying to scroll through them to find the one usable one that I want. The game modes are average. I'm at the point where the only things that I can stand to play are hardpoint and domination because the spawns normally act like they should. Ground war is something that I couldn't really care less about. It's the same as the last
last couple years where it's a large map cut from a chunk of the Warzone map and they throw more players into it of course. Nothing particularly exciting or interesting. The war mode is great for leveling up guns but kind of sucks the big one otherwise. Hey I have an interesting idea. Let's funnel the players up three tight corridors and block any other possible route because we want to tell you how to play. They copied the mode from Call of Duty World War 2 and then flipped some other assets from COD 4 maps and one map from Modern Warfare 2019 that I can't be fucked to remember the name of. Overall, the gameplay does feel incredibly smooth and the movement has basically been reverted back to Modern Warfare 2019's movement. I didn't think that I would miss that movement in Modern Warfare 2019, but Modern Warfare 2 felt so slow and bringing this back, you really notice the difference. We are already seeing the return of the movement kings on TikTok as well. The multiplayer isn't terrible overall. The main issue is it's just entirely recycled content. There's zero originality in it. It doesn't play bad and you can certainly have fun while you're playing it, but the lack of new content is just disrespectful to the player base. So much of this game has been recycled from past CODs. The core gameplay is recycled from Modern Warfare 2019. It's no wonder that the game is boring. Zombies is just DMZ zombies. They eliminated the classic round based zombie system in order to recycle even more content. DMZ contracts, Warzone map, and basically copy the zombie types from Cold War and Vanguard. I've never been the biggest zombies player, but it was always a fun distraction when you are needing a break from the multiplayer. And for some reason, I do find myself enjoying the zombies mode occasionally, even though there's no reason that I should. I think it's just because it's so casual, I can just sort of turn my brain off. I saw a video where the devs talked about the zombies being a tense experience, but generally I found it to be the exact opposite. It's also great for leveling up guns, especially exploiting the extraction zombie spawns. Oh, they nerfed the spawns. Great. Also, why is my fun time gated to 45 minutes? It's a giant map and most of your time is spent running around trying to get a new contract that takes several minutes and it just wastes a lot of your already limited time. There's also a regular AI in the zombies game mode. They can actually ruin the experience because sometimes they just immediately kill you. They're generally a much greater threat than the zombies. They're the same stupid AI from the campaign, but their bullets can just do a ton of damage randomly. The zombies mode also for me had a ton of stability issues to say the least. I had a time where my game completely crashed mid-match so of course I lost all of the shit that I worked towards. I had a time where the server just died mid-match. However, Activision was at least smart enough to recognize that that was their fault so I didn't lose all of my shit that time. One weird thing as well is I also had a time where my controller, it disabled my ability to turn side to side. Everything else worked but I just couldn't turn side I decide at all it was it was really weird and because I was in the middle of a match I had to unplug my controller quickly switch the input to mouse and key and then extract on mouse and key. Unplugging your controller and changing your settings to mouse and key while trying not to die to zombies is uh, definitely a little bit of a challenge so I guess I should thank Activision for keeping me on my toes. The Warzone gameplay was extremely smooth and Warzone generally ran well for me the little bit that I've played it. When Rebirth comes back, I'll probably play and grind that a lot. I generally prefer the Resurgence over actual Warzone because I don't like my game just being over from bad luck or just some Timmy sitting in a corner randomly. The new Warzone map seems okay. They definitely went back closer to a Verdansk type feel with the layout. I haven't played as much of this as I normally would have. The rest of the game has just turned turned me off to it, but as time goes on, I'll play more, and like I said, when Rebirth comes back, I'm sure I'll be all over it. My skill-based matchmaking as well hasn't been as bad in Warzone, which so far is feels weird. Generally, my lobbies have been easier, and I've won about half of my games. A lot of games, I'm going like 10 and 1 too, or even better, which is interesting. The visibility is better than it has been in the past, but they still have a very heavily gray color palette. The audio is terrible. No other way to put it. Someone will be balls deep in your asshole and tickling your gooch before you even know that they're there because there will be just no audio. Audio is an issue every single year with Call of Duty, and quite frankly, it's just extremely frustrating. Like I said, it generally ran fine for me, and I generally had high, consistent frame rates, but there was 
was occasional packet loss randomly, but it wasn't too often. Cheaters are still rampant though. There's still tons of people live streaming themselves cheating on TikTok all the time. It's actually hilarious that they're so brazen about it and that they have zero fears of repercussions. The weapon balancing is awful. Currently at the time of recording, the snake shots are broken again. This is about the 10th time. Why is it that every time a new Call of Duty comes out, the snake shots are just extremely broken, like god tier level guns? It's every single time. Generally, it seems clear that most of the effort that went into the game went into Warzone specifically, which is no surprise. This is what Call of Duty is now. Multiplayer only exists to be a place to level up guns for Warzone. It was leaked when Modern Warfare 2 came out that Call of Duty would be on a two-year cycle, and it's clear that that was the plan, but maybe because Modern Warfare 2 sucked so much, Activision wanted another annual release, or maybe Activision just wanted to add to that money pile that they roll around in. I swear the Activision headquarters, they have to look like Scrooge McDuck diving into a pile of gold. Either way, they told Sledgehammer to fart out a full game as quickly as possible and it shows in the final product. You can certainly have fun on the game, but it's insulting that they tried to get away with recycling this much content and selling it for full price. If you're a hardcore Call of Duty player, you probably already own this game, so this review would be pretty pointless. But if you're a casual player and thinking about buying the game, don't. Maybe if it's heavily discounted or if Microsoft does end up adding it to Games Pass, try it out then, but it's not worth anything thing near $70. Fuck Activision, fuck this game, and fuck you too if you try to defend this shit as well. Anyways guys, this has been your boy Drinker. Again, if you do like the video, leave a like, comment down below telling me what else you want to see from me in the future, subscribe, turn on post notifications, all of that good shit. But as always, this has been your boy Drinker, and I am out of here. Peace.